Well, we're going to start chapter six. I'm just going to forewarn you, chapter six and seven are probably the two hardest chapters that we will be doing. We're going to start with talking about energy and living things. All living things perform cellular respiration. Aerobic cellular respiration requires oxygen. Aerobic cellular respiration, so anaerobic. So aerobic means with oxygen and aerobic means without. And we have some organisms here, just showing you a frog, mimosa plant, and then some bacteria that undergo um, <clears throat> different parts. We'll talk about bacteria and what they do, but that they basically need to be able to make energy. So aerobic cellular respiration takes potential energy and it is used to drive the synthesis to make ATP with the help of oxygen. So we can see here, we have our glucose. So we have sugar, we have our oxygen. We're going to put, we're gonna put a covalent bond here. We're gonna take ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate and put the phosphate on it to make ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. This is um, kind of like, I call this the uncharged battery. And of course we have a visitor who wants to learn about cellular respiration. And this one over here is the charged battery. <clears throat> All right. So we have those two and my cat picks them. <laughs> All right. So um, these are redox reactions. When we talk about redox reaction. I like to use the same oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. And what oil rig is referring to is where one is losing an electron, the other atom is gaining an electron. And so um, you really don't have one without the other. So if an if a atom is losing an electron, another atom is picking it up. So these are referred to as redox reactions. So we can see here, you guys are familiar with this when we did ionic bonds. You know that sodium is going to, it's got one, hopefully my pen doesn't die, one uh, valence electron. And so it gives that electron to chlorine. If you remember had, oh, come on, stick with me here. It had, oh yeah, it's like dying. Oh, come on, let me finish this. It has, well, I tried. <laughs> has seven valence electrons around it. And so then we can fill that um, outer electron shell and then they hang out together. But one has lost, one has gained. So that is a reduction. So sodium has been oxidized and <clears throat> chlorine has been, i plug that in, has been reduced. So like I said, redox reactions generally happen together. And I try to get myself electrocuted by plugging the wrong ends in my devices. And so what we're having here is hydrogen. Hydrogen also, hydrogen has an electron on it. So when we look at this, I keep trying to see if it'll, it'll let me write with my finger, but it won't. So when we look at this, we have our, our sugar and with our sugar, it is losing our C6H12O6. It's losing hydrogen to make CO2. Notice there's no hydrogen on CO2. And then we have our oxygen. Notice oxygen turns into water. And it just can't magically turn into water, but we're going to talk about that whole process, but it's picking up hydrogens. And so our sugar is being oxidized and our oxygen is being reduced. There are some other players involved in this process. And one of the big players is called NADH. And this is an electron carrier. <clears throat> They're very important in cellular respiration and, and photosynthesis. We'll be using these in both chapters. This whole, all these concepts, we'll be using them over again. They take electrons from one location to the next. They drop them, they pick them up, 
they drop them off. They come back, pick them up, and drop them off. So I tend to call them electron taxi cabs, right? You don't get a new taxi, a brand new car when you drop something off. You reuse it. And that's what we're going to do here is we're going to reuse um, this molecule. So NAD plus gets reduced, meaning it picked up the hydrogen. You can see it there with the yellow arrow. <clears throat> and then we're later going to oxidize it when we drop it off. So here's an example of that redox reaction with our sugar. We can abbreviate sugar with CH2O because we have approximately one water molecule per carbon. And so what we're doing here is we're taking our hydrogen, like I said, hydrogen splits into a proton. H plus is a proton, right? It's a hydrogen atom without an electron. And if it doesn't have electron, all you have left is a proton. So we have a proton. So we can split it into protons and electrons. We have our NAD plus, we're going to reduce it. And then we are going to have our, um, when we split this down, basically what we're gonna say is that NAD plus is going to actually take two electrons and a proton. So we have this proton left over, right? <clears throat> so that's why you'll see this represented as NADH plus, H plus, because we have two hydrogens we're gonna break down. So we have two protons, two electrons, and NAD plus will take two electrons. Oh, that would be bad. <laughs> and a proton, <laughs> flipping you guys off here. Uh, and a proton and leaving one proton left over. And that's what that H plus is representing. ATP. Um, we have what's called adenosine, which is your nitrogen base adenine with our sugar. And, our, and then we have our AMP, adenosine monophosphate with one phosphate group, ADP with diphosphate, two phosphates, and ATP with three phosphates. And these phosphate bonds, and you can see how they have those red covalent bonds, they're very angry. They don't like to stay together. They're very high energy. And so when we break them, we release a lot of energy. But on the other hand, it takes a lot of energy to put them back together. So the hydrolysis of ATP, of course, we're going to split water when we do this because we got to put our ends on. Um, it's exergonic, meaning, again, if we break one phosphate group off, we're going to release energy. And so we're going downhill. And what we can do is take that energy we re release and we can use it to push something uphill, endergonic. So we couple this reaction. So we do a lot of energy coupling with our exergonic and our endergonic reaction. <clears throat> so there is diff two different types of phosphorylation, putting that phosphate back on. One is called substrate level phosphorylation, and that is done with an enzyme. And so generally what we do is we have an enzyme, it holds onto that phosphate group and the substance it's putting the, it's, it's, it's substrate, right? What it's going to put the phosphate on. And then um, it does that. Um, we also have what's called oxidative phosphorylation, which we'll kind of get into at the end of cellular respiration. And that is using oxygen to phosphorylate. So here is our substrate level. You can see we have that little curly Q thing that's supposed to be an enzyme with a phosphate group on it. And then we're going to put um, our substrate in this case would be ADP and it binds. And then we put the phosphate onto ADP to make it ATP. Does not require oxygen. We generally don't get a lot of numbers um, doing this. We get some ATP. Most of our ATP is going to be from oxidative phosphorylation. <clears throat> oxidative phosphorylation is going to happen in the mitochondria. In prokaryotes, oxidative phosphorylation takes place in the plasma membrane. It does require oxygen, and it can produce large numbers of ATP. With aerobic cellular respiration, there are three phases we can break it down into. One is glycolysis. 
two is the citric acid cycle, and three is the oxidative phosphorylation phase. In each one of those, there are some other little sub, sub phases or sub stages like our, uh, pyruvate oxidation, which is also called the intermediate step, or your book calls it the preparatory step. And we're going to get into each one of these steps um, with the with the other lessons. And so I am going to leave you with that. But we will again, we are going to be talking about glycolysis, uh, intermediate and the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. It will be very complicated. I promise you we'll get through it and I will see you next time. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out.